Are you looking to buy an F90 M5? Well, here's a buyer's guide to make sure you buy the right one. you want to buy, year is going to have a big difference in pricing, but it's also going to make a big difference to the actual car you're buying. For example, if you're buying a 2018, you could be buying a non-comp or a competition, but also there's more to it. The 2018s never had any OPFs in them. They are the earliest M5 that came out, and as such, they have a different exhaust system with less emissions on it than the later ones. If you were to go over to a 2019, which is what we've got right here, you're going to find that it's very similar to the 2018 but it's got OPFs in it as well. From 2019, we get into the early 2020s. Now, they've done an early 2020 that was a pre-LCI, so the same shape as this car, but the iDrive and the dash is the newer LCI version. And if you're into tuning, what you're gonna find is the 18s and 19s can be flashed via OBD straight away, and the early 2020s are gonna need an in-house bench unlock to make them tunable. After we get to June 2020, we then move over to the LCI M5s. The LCI M5s have got different backlights, they've got different headlights, they've got a slightly different gearbox where we went from an 8 HP 75 to the 76, the same as what's used in the M8. And then you're also going to find that if you do want to tune a car like that, you're going to need to send the ECUs away to be unlocked and then the car can be flashed. After that, we then go over to the 2021 M5s, which are also an LCI, but the exhaust system is completely different. And as such, instead of having four catalytic converters, it has six catalytic converters and the OPFs also. You may be wondering, what is the difference between a non-comp and a competition? Well, visually, there's a few differences. You're going to find that the competitions have got black grills, they've got black windmill covers, they've got a black diffuser on them, and the side parts are black. Basically, they're de-chromed. Also, the competitions sit 7 mil lower, and they have a stiffer chassis. Now, for some people that want the car to be as soft as possible, it has been said that the early competitions can be a harsh ride. Mine's a competition, and personally, I love driving around in it. Even as a daily car, I find it absolutely fine. Also, the competition has a slightly different exhaust system. Now, the exhaust that comes on the competition has black tips on the back, and also the resonator does a less of a job of reducing the sound. As for the back box, it's exactly the same as on the non-comp. Also, the competition makes a little bit more power than the non-comp, but honestly, it's not that noticeable. You've got about 18 brake horsepower extra, and on the road, you're not gonna tell a difference. As such, we see a lot of non-competition cars with black parts put on them or carbon parts put on them, and once that's done, they all look basically the same. Also, the competition comes with the end stripe on the seat belts, and they come with competition wheels. When buying any car, it's important to make sure it's been serviced correctly. It's no different with an F90 M5. Go onto the iDrive and make sure that it's got all the services that should be there. That's the running in service, and the other ones that are there, make sure they haven't been missed, make sure they're not late, and also take into consideration if there's a load of big servicing coming up. If you're going to have to splash out for tyres, brakes, oil changes, spark plugs, it's all going to add up and cost you quite a lot. If you're buying a car from an enthusiast, you may find it's actually had more servicing than BMW recommend. As for our shop car, that's the case. We're dumping the oil at least every 5,000 miles to make sure that engine is looked after and stays as healthy as can be. When it comes to maintenance, some things are going to be obvious, like tyres and brakes, but there's a few things that you might not be aware of, and as such, that may be a front diff, a rear diff, the gearbox service, or the transfer case. As these are getting more mileage on them, you're going to want to make sure that it's already been done, or make sure that the car is costing the right amount so that you've got enough budgeted to service those bits in the future. So let's get down to what to look out for on these cars. Well, if you've seen any of my other content, you'll already know. The first one and the big one is the coolant tanks. They're prone for leaking. If they leak, they make a mess of the injectors, they make a mess of the coil packs. And if you're buying a car, it's quite common that that's already been changed by BMW. There are aftermarket solutions out there, and we will soon be releasing a video discussing those. But that is probably the biggest one to check on this car. 
Also, if you're listening to the engine and you're worried that it's noisy, these are a particularly noisy engine, and BMW is also aware of that, and there is a way to determine whether the noise is good or not. If it is a normal noise that you should be hearing, you can unplug the high-pressure fuel pump, start the car, and it will run it in a safe mode with less fuel pressure, and as such, the knocking noise or the ticking noise will go. If you do that and you can still hear a loud noise, then you know that, okay, there's actually a problem with this car. If you are going to do that, it's important that it's done at a garage because it is going to throw fault codes and it does need to be done in a safe and professional environment. Some people that are looking to buy F90M5s don't believe they're fast enough and they want to make them a little bit faster. I'm one of those guys. Well, if you're also one of them, let's go through that process and how it changes on the different years. So first thing to say is if you're buying an F90 M5 and it's been tuned, it does have no BMW warranty on it. The warranty is not valid. Even if the car goes back to standard, tuning is detectable. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Getting on to the tuning, you see a lot of these have got stage one and stage two packages. Stage ones are normally making around 700, and our stage twos make around 800. If it's an 18 or 19 plate, it can be flashed straight through the OBD port. If it's an early 2020, we can unlock the ECUs here and flash them straight away. If it's a June 2020 onwards, we have to send the ECUs away. The ECUs have to be unlocked, and it's a bit more of a deeper process. And you need to take that into consideration when you're budgeting for the tuning as well, because the tuning on the ones that need to be sent away cost more than on these earlier ones like we've got here. So let's talk about common modifications on this car. What's standard and what has someone put on? Well, my car's a perfect example. Let's see what's already been changed on it. So these exhaust tips, these are from America. They're bigger than the standard ones. I put those on. These badges, no chrome surround. I put those on. These rear lights are actually the LCI lights. The earlier lights are completely red. These can be retrofitted on. If we come over to here, obviously I've put bigger wheels on. I haven't got the standard competition wheels anymore. And then looking around at the front of the car, you're going to see that I've made some changes. So again, no chrome surround on the badge. I've got a big splitter on the front, which is aftermarket. These are BMW, but didn't come with the car. And you're going to see little bits of carbon all over, just making it look that little bit more aggressive. So when it comes to factory options, there's a couple of different sound systems. Some of them have got a Harman Kardon, some of them have got a Bang & Wilkes. My car came with a Harman Kardon, which is the lesser system, and to be honest with you, it sounds rubbish. It's probably the worst thing about this car. So I uprated the speakers with an American set, and also the Bang & Wilkes, they have the ambient lighting built into them, which the other ones don't. So I've now got the Bang & Wilkes covers, and I've got the American speakers in. So if you're looking at a car and it hasn't quite got the spec you want, there's guys out there that do retrofitting, and most of the parts are upgradable. So some of the good options that are out there, we've got remote viewing, we've got the 360 cameras, we've got the massard seats, we've got the ambient air fresheners, and this car hasn't got it, but you can get some real trick cruise control where it can change lanes for you and vary the speed. I've got the basic cruise control on this. And a way to tell if it's got the better cruise control or not is you're going to see at the front there is a big square black box there and that is the radar sensor. And as such, you can see my car hasn't got it. But like I say, if you are looking at buying a car and it hasn't got all the options you want, they can be fitted on anyway. If you guys want to know what options are available for these cars, here's a list right here. So when you're looking at one of these cars, one of the first things you want to do is make sure the oil level's correct. Also, ask the guy, how much oil is this consuming? And what oil is being used in it? A lot of the guys that are enthusiasts are putting in a slightly thicker oil at a 540. Are they putting in some real bad triple Q? Are they a car enthusiast or are they just dumping anything into it? If you want to check the oil level, you can do it on the iDrive. There is no dipstick, but do be warned, the car does need to be up to temperature to be able to see that. Also, check the coolant on it as well. Ask the person if it's been into BMW lately. Have there been any problems with the car? What is the reason why they're selling it? Go through the car thoroughly to try to make sure that it is a good example. Now, there is one thing that we'd really like to know about these cars when buying them, but unfortunately, it can't be seen at the moment, and that is how many launch controls the car has done. These cars have got a 100 limit on hard launches. They will still launch after, but they do a softer launch. Once that 100 have been reached, you're going to need to use something like our gearbox map to remove that limiter so that you can carry on doing launches. 
and unfortunately there is no way to check it, but you will notice the way that it launches changes. When the launch control is under 100, there is no exhaust pop as it goes through the gears. When you've done over 100 launches, you can hear it pop through the gears, and that's because it's a slightly longer shift where it's backing off the throttle through the changes. Unfortunately, you can't check it, so you don't know how many launches a car you're looking at has done. So you're looking at an F90 M5, owners told you it hasn't been tuned, but you want to check. One thing you can do is check the iDrive, see if the sports displays have been increased. And another thing, if you really want to be certain, and the proper way to do it, is actually get the car plugged in at BMW or anyone that has a genuine IFSTA, because if you plug in, even if the car's been put back to standard, tuning detection will show on the computer, and you'll be able to see, okay, this car has actually been tuned previously. Just a tidbit of information for you guys that do want to keep a completely standard one. So some general advice now for when you're looking at buying an F90 M5. You really, when you're buying a car that's this value, want to bring along someone that knows what they're looking at or a diagnostics machine. This car may contain errors in it that are not showing up on the dash but are stored in the modules. With a scan machine, you'll be able to see those. Also, it's important to take the car for a test drive where the car is tested thoroughly. The test drive is not just for you to enjoy the car and see what it feels like, it's also to make sure that it's running properly. There could be a problem with that X drive system or that engine, and if you're just poodling around at 20, 30 mile an hour, it may not show itself. And what you may find is that the first time you go to put your foot down in that car, you start to experience problems. Thanks for checking out our F90 M5 buyer's guide. If you want to learn more about these cars, then check out our other videos as we've got tons and tons of information on this platform. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, click like, click subscribe, and we'll see you soon.